What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I was watching with my wife on the cruise, Rogue One, and that movie, man, is just classic to me. And we seem to be getting a similar situation with Cap 4, where the director has left the the, the production uh, the post-production part to someone else uh, not necessarily that he left it to someone else but he was uh, i guess gotten rid of and who was the director initially for this so garrett well for rogue one oh, for, for rogue one it was Gar- gareth yes. edwards went to tony gilroy yes. this is julius ona we don't know who supposedly this has been handed off to but in theory there would be a a new director doing the post-production okay brian they can put whoever on this, Brian. This is still, to me, at this stage, what we see on screen will be a reflection of what we've heard from the rumor mills of all the chaos, all the reshoots, all the rewrites. We're going to see that reflected perhaps on film as well. I don't know if we're going to get the same classic treatment that we got for Rogue One in terms of entertainment. Uh, But Cat 4, at this point to me, is just sort of a wait and see what we get sort of thing. What do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, Rogue One is the exception, not the rule. (laughs) That is the rare... I mean, let's be frank. Number one, Gareth Edwards is really talented. So... yes. He, this is a guy who both before and after has at, le- at the very least a very keen visual sense and Rogue One is a movie that looks very distinctive even within the Star Wars universe by all accounts it was his first really big budget movie um, and so even, like, even compared to Godzilla it was like a bigger scale production and it was in Star Wars and so by all accounts it kind of got away from him a little bit at the end but you've got one of the five best screenwriters of the modern era and Tony Gilroy, who has also directed on multiple occasions in the room. So, you know, if you were going to do that kind of handoff, Disney had pretty good hands before and after in terms mm-hmm. of how to, to, to pull off the against the odds outcome that Rogue One actually is a classic and wound up making a ton of money. Julius Ona, who's the director of Brave New World, is not necessarily gareth edwards uh even you know, he's, he's definitely an up-and-comer but he hasn't he didn't do a godzilla before this he hadn't done like a, even a, a scale project close to this so he has no claim to fame as to stuff that he's done that people will be like oh snap yeah not really um and so th- i think th- if you believe the rumor mill that's out there is that he's playing ball he's taking taking it like a good soldier so therefore, he will be credited as the director on this movie. But he is not doing the reshoots that are still going on, and he's not doing the post-production. That's the report. Hmm. So whoever's we don't know whose hands this is ultimately in yet, but I'm sure that will come out who is actually running this by the end of this production. I don't see the interest in this movie, nor the fanfare on with regards to other people excited to see this, all the conversations that I've had regarding Cap 4 have been wait and see, and and, and people expect a mess. And this doesn't obviously bode well for Marvel Studios in their attempt to revive the success that they've had in the past, Uh, especially after Deadpool, right? Everybody's claiming Deadpool is the, the the resurgence of the MCU again. And to me, it's really not. Especially if you if we start listing some of the stuff that they're gonna be putting out soon, Brian. Yeah. And 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 just I am so underwhelmed by this this Harrison Ford Red Hulk, Brian, because that's what it looks like. This yeah. doesn't look like you know, a Red Hulk that we should be like, I don't know, Brian, does, from what we saw, do you think, do you still think that this Red Hulk is going to have some sense of what he's doing 
or is he going to be just a nut job? I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, Ford certainly seems sinister and duplicitous in the trailer and in the footage. So, I, I mean, even more so than I think, like William Hurt's rendition of Ross was very ornery, but he seemed, he, his agenda seemed somewhat clear, even if it was not moral. Mm -hmm. The Harrison Ford one seems more about deception, like in the public eye, versus he seems pretty shady behind the scenes. Yeah. So, I don't know, like the idea of like a completely mindless Red Hulk that he has no idea what he's doing. I, maybe. I mean, maybe that's a maybe that's a get out of jail free card for the actor. But is it bad to say I don't care? <laughs> like, I don't. Like, I don't think either scenario saves this movie. Um, I think you know we've heard so much about how. The fundamental early mistake to me was how cluttered this film was, right? You have the leader, you have Red Hulk, you have Serpent Society. Which we like, haven't seen, yeah. Way too much, right? And then they and then they get to the test screenings. And if you believe the rumor mill, then you know, there's all sorts of problems. But one of the biggest mm -hmm. words that got thrown around was boring. Boring. What? A Captain America movie. Boring. Like that's worse than bad, I think. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you know, they basically have Especially gone back. Especially for Anthony yeah. Mack. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Especially with exactly. You have you have him, you have you have some acting talent in this movie. Like boring is not a word you would expect to come out of a screening, even if it was a mess. Um, so they're back at the beginning on this. And it kind of feels like maybe it makes sense that the, the same guy wouldn't be necessarily at the controls um by the end of this because it's being chopped up and redone and, and rehashed and cut down and we know the servant society other than giancarlo esposito's uh character has been basically removed from this film entirely um I, the problem the biggest problem i see now and i'm watching the trailer and what i'm guessing is going on in the reshoots is they keep talking about Winter Soldier. I think you, what you're going to get is you're going to get the watered down version of Winter Soldier. That's what I think. Th now, they're not gunning for watered down, but I think they're really trying to run that back yeah. in the worst way. I don't yeah, yeah, think it's yeah. going to be successful. I think people are going to see through that and they're going to yeah. come out of the theater saying, just put Winter Soldier back in the theater. I'd rather watch <laughs> that again than watch this. They haven't showed the leader. If they haven't, they showed the Hulk. If they haven't showed the leader, it's because it looks ridiculous, Brian. That's what my expectation of the leader is. This is going to be goofy. This is going to be ridiculous. And it's just going to be very disappointing, man. And it's just going to, it is going to, reinforce the already negative sentiment for the MCU. So I heard a quick blur from Tim Blake Nelson on the, Mar on the Marvel podcast, where he kind of made some cryptic reference to, well, my character's been on ice, shall we say, for 16 years, but comes back with a vengeance. That was his tagline for the leader. So I don't know if that was some kind of Cap reference to being similarly frozen as Cap somehow, but he did. That was the verbiage he used in the yeah. quote that I heard. Everything we're seeing with Marvel right now, it, it's like we're running it back. We're running it back any way we can, right? Look across all the projects. Right? It's like we talked about it with Russo and, and Downey and the risks of doing that. But why Disney's doing it commercially is they're retreating to safe ground to make money. The Captain mm -hmm. America franchise feels like it is running backwards toward Winter Soldier to try and recapture uh, that, that, magic, but... that particular movie, right? And you hear, you know, like Kevin's obsessed supposedly in Secret Wars without doing the portal scene from Endgame. He's running it back in Secret mm. Wars trying to recapture it. Everything we hear to me is, and, and people are going to say like, well, isn't that a good thing? Wasn't that the heyday of Marvel? But that's not how you do it. Like usually when you do stuff that way, People just walk out feeling like they've been served a cheap imitation, and they they know what you're trying to do. Um, so I, I, they would have been better off not even mentioning Winter Soldier, and letting us come to that conclusion if that were to be the case. But now that you have it in our faces and in our ears and in our minds, what we perhaps expect is something similar, and 
the disappointment will set in. Yeah. Now you can run it back sometimes and pull it off. Uh, Force Awakens would be a really good example of really running it back and everyone mm -hmm. being happy. And then, you know, five, six years later, being like, wait, they, they literally just remade New Hope. Uh, but it worked, right? That's an example that Disney would point to and say, well, that's why we're doing it. So we'll see. But this project, this production just sounds too troubled to me. And this rumor, if true, is just the latest example of, I think what we're going to get is is a mess. Like, I just think, like, there might be yeah. some really cool sequence. We might see some really cool sequences I think even in the trailer, there are a few shots where I was like, oh, I'd be interested to see that scene. I'm just not convinced that those scenes are going to connect into the kind of sleek, amazing film that Winter Soldier turned out to be. I'm mad that they made Isaiah Bradley go bad. I'm tired of them taking our leaders. Brian, I'm going to make a prediction. Kevin Feige will not get fired, but he will resign at some point because he is not that 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 whole doom stuff as you you know we already sent out yeah. i already sent me you know some articles regarding that and the thing that bothered me about that um and we'll close and then we'll end this but um the fact that kevin feige said let's get victor von doom right is a problem that is a problem yeah if you believe the quote he pitched him on it it wasn't it wasn't we downy that it, I, I, yeah it wasn't down yeah and i don't even think it was kevin i think it was bob Iger called him into his office hey yo do this or it's over for you so you know what i I'm agree saying? i agree but i don't think so i think Iger told him figure out a way to get downy yeah. so that in fairness to kevin that's a handcuff on kevin Yes. Now he's got the order and he's got the money. Yes. But he's like, what do I do? How do I how do I do this? And I just think he was like, he looked at his Avenger, he looked at his Avengers lineup. And he was like, and he looked at the Kang situation. And he basically was yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna I I don't want to touch Tony Stark's death. He said that before. I don't want to touch that moment in Endgame. So this is my end around. I want to make him. I'm going to make him the villain somehow. I'm going to subvert that by making him the villain. So I, I do think it's that sequence. I think you're right. It starts with Iger. No one will say it. Iger gave the order to Kevin. He ordered the code red. Kevin went and said, "I got. I'll, I'll pitch Downey." And he and, and and while he was pitching him, Downey's like, "What's that sound?" And Kevin's like, "Oh, that's the beep on the trucks backing up to your house with, with all the cash in the vault." Oh my God. But I'm telling you, man, that statement, let's get down, let's get Victor Von Doom right, is a is a troubling statement, and especially for the future of Doom, if we ever get to a future of Doom. That is actually your best argument for why Kevin Feige's in the final stages of his tenure with Marvel. Because he's if it is, he's clearly looking at it, and I can't totally blame him for this. He's kind of saying, like, I got to go out as close to yeah. on top as I can. Right. So, like, if he was thinking 10 years of Victor Von Doom, I don't think this is what's happening. He is looking at it like, I need two big, massive, eventized Avengers movies. I need, to tee, up the X I need to tee up the X-Men. And then that's, I'm good. And I think I he's kind of saying, like, you know what? For this last ride, I kind of want to do it with my friends. That's kind of what he's saying, right? Like Russo's Downey with Chris Evans. I want to do it with my friends. I can't blame him for that. That's kind of what he's saying. He has the right to do that. But that is starting to look like the pieces aligning for his swan song. Yeah. Yeah, that, Yeah, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Cap 4 uh, getting the Rogue One treatment. Do you treatment? think it makes money? Cool. Cap 4. Do you think it's profitable? $200 million budget plus reshoots. Probably, I'm going to guess this is 250 to 300 when all said and done. Do you think they can clear 750 on this to make no. money? I agree. No. I think it's a lose. I think they lose money on it, which is shocking. Last one made a billion one. Yeah. I mean, but it made a billion one because it had these other people in it, right? And also because it was good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and he was yeah, coming yeah, off yeah. Winter Soldier. Like Civil War is really good. Like Winter Soldier is better. Yeah, but Civil yeah. War is really good. Like, yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs>
We'll see, Brian. This is going to be very interesting just to, to watch. Uh, I can't wait for the movie to come out to see what we get because we've been talking about this film for quite some time and it's been in the news for quite some time. And uh, let's see what they cook up. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Cap 4 situation. And do you think Kevin Feige is setting his exit plans? Because it seems to be the case because I don't think Kevin can continue hearing the negative uh, tones people have been saying about the MCU. There's a lot of people that are out, Brian. There's a lot of people that are out and are, but we'll come back to see what, if they can recapture that moment again. And I don't know if, after this, if they can't do it, I don't know if Kevin Feige can stick around and deal with all of it anymore. Yeah, also, just in closing, Disney did formally announce their succession planning committee for the post Iger era. Remember, I still think, I still think there's a chance you see Kevin Feige in the, in the leadership elsewhere at that company, higher when in the next iteration. I do not believe he will work for for another um, CEO if that makes sense in this capacity. Like if oh, he's yeah, part of the yeah, next yeah. management team, I think he has a different role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Energy Report. The show goes on! Yeah!